Tessera's nerf room. This entire video is going to be shot in one take. That's it. And I'm going to actually split this one take up into a couple sections when I absolutely have to, like to go reload, just so there's no dead space. But this recording will not stop even once throughout the course of this video. Hence why I did the intro before I actually said my intro. With that said, we're going to be doing three unboxings at once today. Ah, and they're all Roblox micro shots. The Roblox Strucid Boom Strike. The Roblox Phantom Forces Boxy Buster. And the Roblox Mad City Plasma Ray. As bro, why? And on the sides of the box, it, they're recommending each other. I think I've already got these covered. With that said, let's get into it. Devaluing collectibles is fun. All the value is gone. Every last bit of it, I am evil. Let's start with the Boxy Buster. Pretty sure this is the first one that came out. And inside we have the blaster. And in here should be two darts. Oh, you're meant to open them bottom first. Yep, two darts in the bottom. Now let's take a look at the Boom Strike. This one is substantially bigger. It's actually pretty big. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's codes in all of these. I will give these to friends who play Roblox. And finally, we have the Plasma Ray. Oh, there it is. Uh, out flies the code. There we go. And now, we have more darts. And we have even more darts. I don't think any of these darts are in particularly exclusive colors, but you can only really get them with this blaster and maybe a couple others. So I should probably answer the question, why am I getting all of these and reviewing them? Simply put, they're all basically the same, so I wanna see which one's the best and would I actually wanna use any of these in a nerf war. So first, let's take a look at the Boxy Buster. Um, this is unholdable. This is already off to a bad start in terms of the practicality department because you have to hold it like this or like this. And actually, like if you hold it like this, I guess that works. Yeah, it is. It is really weird. There is no grip. It is all square. This is 100% a display blaster. But at the same time, due to the rather simple shape, it might actually make a pretty good master key thing to integrate. And the barrel is pretty easy to load. It's a jolt, you fire, and it actually pops pretty nicely. Uh, just getting a good look at the design of this blaster, it actually looks pretty good. I don't mind the way that this thing looks. Uh, it's got pretty nice paint, obviously not on both sides, but this is a separate piece of plastic. It's built pretty nicely. I mean, I would actually see myself integrating this into something. I'm not really gonna collect it because I don't have any reason to collect jolts, but I could actually use this as an integration thing, probably take this off just so that I can actually like use the grip maybe, or just put this in front of a magwell and have it be like a, oh yeah, it's just a hole where there's a trigger in there. So you can just like stick your middle finger in it and pop off one dart. Uh, how does it sound dry firing? Doesn't sound the best. I've heard worse blasters though. Let's take a look at the Plasma Ray, kind of my least favorite design here. It is very, very, very simple. Still looks okay. I don't really mind the way that this looks. The grip is a lot nicer in the hand, but still not very good. T-pull still gets in the way and it still kind of hits your hand right there. This one sounds different. This one makes a sound. This one makes a different sound. How does this load? It loads all right. I don't see myself integrating this into anything or doing anything with it. Still works pretty nicely. And we put another one in like this. Yeah, it hits my hand. They're not hitting hard at all. They're hitting very, very soft. And I don't really dig the design that much. I think it looks okay, but I do definitely like the way that this one looks more. I see this thing as being like an integration. This one, I don't really know what this one's looking like. Very, very simple, not too much going on. Now let's take a look at this one. This is definitely my favorite to look at. This is a good looking blaster. A lot of painted details on here. Like the blue is painted, this gray is painted, this black is painted, and they're painted on both sides. Still no Nerf or Roblox logo. 
I don't understand the Roblox. Oh, well, that's, the Roblox logo is painted on. The Nerf logo is indenting. Warning labels are here. The grip is actually good. Wow. This is actually the most usable grip I've felt today. It's, it's not bad. And this one sounds completely different than the other two. Listen to this one. What the heck is that? Versus, and I don't know what is going on there. But yeah, this one's got a nice design, got a nice ergo. Nice deep barrel fit. That's, oh, that's compelling. The barrel fit in there is good. And then, just like the others, not very good performance, but not the worst. This one's my favorite so far. Taking a look at these blasters, first impressions out of all of them, they're actually pretty good. Uh, this one really doesn't function as a blaster. This is definitely just a collector's item, or it would probably make a very nice integration. Again, as I said, it's got very simple corners on it. It would be very, very easy to just flatten something out and just go click it right in. I can actually just friction hold it like that. You might be able to use this pin and these pins on top to like so secure the blaster in place but there is absolutely no way to hold this thing like the way that it is unless you hold it really really tight like that it is not a comfortable blaster to hold on to though it does kind of look like a sort of futuristic knuckle duster thing going on here just go like that with it please don't do that it is actually pretty sharp on the front end and uh, the styling of this blaster is cool this one is definitely my favorite uh, in pretty much every department. The ergo looks good, the design is good, the barrel fit is tight, the trigger feels the best and the most natural with this shape, and honestly, this has the most going for it as a standalone little sidearm pistol thing. It's also the biggest out of all three of them. You can see that it is substantially bigger than this one and way bigger than the other one. You could, like, you could almost hide this one inside of this one. This one is my least favorite in every department except for the ergonomics. This one doesn't sound the best. The barrel sticks out, or the dart sticks out of the barrel a little bit too much. The trigger feels a little bit too tight. The, the grip is too small and your hand hits the T-pull thing. It really isn't the best experience out there and I don't see much reason to buy this other than collector's purposes. So my least favorite out of these three is this one, the Plasma Ray. Second place, is this one, the the uh, the Boxy Buster, mainly because integrations, again, not really usable as a blaster. My absolute favorite as a blaster is this one. I definitely think this is the best. The, uh, what the heck is this thing even called? The Struced Boom Strike. So if you're looking at any of these micro shots and you think that you wanna get one as a blaster, I'd say go with this one. If you're looking at one of these to integrate into a small kind of uh, master key shotgun thing, I'd go with this one. Thanks for watching, bye. Oh, 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 oh,